We're going to discuss today cranial cruciate ligament rupture in dogs and what do we do for this problem when the dog has the tear of the ligament. To start off, let's talk about the anatomy of the knee or stifle joint in dogs. The top bone of the knee joint is the femur bone. The bottom bone is the tibia bone. In layman's terms, the thigh bone and the shin bone. They come together and are connected together with a series of ligaments that hold everything together. The cranial cruciate ligament joins the femur to the tibia here, and then we have the caudal cruciate ligament. There's a series of other ligaments that we're not going to discuss, but still are very important. We also have two pads, one here, one here, medial meniscus, lateral meniscus, that also provides support to the knee. If we make the femur bone transparent, you can see that the meniscal cartilage or meniscus is a C-shaped structure. And they have two of them, just like we do in humans. This is a side view x-ray of a dog's knee showing the femur bone, the tibia bone, and the top of the tibia bone is called the tibial plateau. And the important thing about the tibial plateau is that it is sloped downhill. The femur bone is sitting on that slope and so it inherently wants to slide down that hill. But what's holding it up in place is the cranial cruciate ligament. Just like the wagon here, it's sitting on a hill. It is attached by this rope and it is kept in place. Should this rope get cut, the wagon would then roll down the hill just the same in a dog's knee. If the cranial cruciate ligament gets torn, the femur bone is going to go down that hill. And as a result, the dog has instability of that knee. The other thing that we have in the knee joint is the meniscus. And the meniscus, as I mentioned previously, is a pad. And this little yellow triangle is representing the caudal pole or back part of the meniscus. It is vulnerable to getting torn when a dog has a cranial cruciate ligament tear. What happens in the dog's knee is the ligament tears. The femur bone, as represented by the wagon, is going to go down that slope, jump onto the back portion of the meniscus, it'll cut a cleft into that meniscus. Here we have an illustration of the meniscus after we've removed the femur bone from the knee joint. And the medial meniscus is more vulnerable to getting a tear. And it usually is a tear in the back portion of the meniscus when that femur bone slides back, crushes that area. And as a result, we get this part that will separate. When it separates, then we can have this portion of the meniscus, which some call it a bucket handle tear because it looks like a bucket handle. It will pop back and forth under the condyle of the femur bone and frequently you can hear an audible popping from the dog's knee as the dog walks. This is painful to the dog. It does cause damage to the femur bone above and also to the cartilage on the tibia bone. And with time, with a chronic meniscal tear, you'll end up with a full thickness wear lesion on the cartilage, which will result in more arthritis. The diagnosis of cranial cruciate ligament tear is largely made on physical examination. In this dog, you can see that the dog has a lot of instability of the knee. This is called the drawer motion test, and you can see the tibia bone shifts forward, and that should not happen at all. After the diagnosis of cranial cruciate ligament tear is made, we can move forward with treatment. In smaller dogs, we will use this technique called the MRIT, or Modified Retinacular Imbrication Technique. Other people call it the Lateral Suture Technique. Another name is the flow technique from Dr. Flo at Michigan State. This is a method in which nylon bands are typically anchored around a little bone called the fibella and then are passed through a bony tunnel that is made in the top of the tibia bone 
and then this is tied on the side of the knee. This can work for small dogs. The bigger dogs don't do as well with this. At least half of them will loosen up the band within two months. We prefer, as a result, to use a technique called the TPLO. Those four letters stand for tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. The whole idea behind this technique is that we're taking the tibial plateau, which is sloped downhill, and we're flattening it or leveling it. As a result, the femur bone, instead of being on a slope, is now more or less on a table. So when the dog puts weight on that leg, the femur bone is not going to slide down the hill as it did in the preoperative state. In order to flatten that slope, what we need to do is make a curve cut or osteotomy, and that's where that O comes from, osteotomy. We make a curve cut in the bone. We take this top portion of bone and we turn it or slide it along that curve cut, as you can see in the second illustration, and then we put a metal plate on the side of the bone along with a series of screws that go through the plate and into the bone. It takes about two months for that to heal together, and during that period of time in the post-op period, we got to be very careful that the patient does not become too overactive. Back to the wagon model. In the preoperative state, we have the wagon representing the femur being on that hill, on that sloped tibial plateau. Postoperatively, the plateau has been flattened as a result it mitigates the driving forces for that bone to slide out of place. Here are two x-rays that were made and as you can see from the side view we have the curve cut in the bone, we've adjusted the slope, put the metal plate on the side of the bone with screws and from this front view we have the metal plate on the side of the tibia bone and the screws that are holding everything in place. During the surgery, we utilize a medication called Noceta. It is a local anesthetic. If you remember going to a dentist, having your face numbed up while a dentist works on a tooth, it is a numbing agent that is used. This is the same thing, but it is a numbing agent that lasts for three days. The numbing agent is placed in these tiny microscopic spheres called liposomes, and they slowly release the medication over time. The TPLO has a number of benefits. 90 to 95% of the patients have a very good outcome. They tend to recover uh, fairly fast. They have better range of motion than other techniques. Less arthritis develops in the joint. Good chance that we can get these dogs back to athletic activity, and less chance that we're going to end up having to do a surgery again on that knee. Typically, these dogs will start walking on the limb within a few days. Some are already walking on the leg shortly after surgery, and usually by two weeks, they're bearing moderate weight on the leg. At two months, the lameness usually is pretty mild. By three to four months, the lameness usually resolves.